kid up there, don't you? Hi. Hi. Welcome back to Tad Family Farm. Welcome to Fall Farmathon. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't even know what episode we're on right now. So uh, here it is. Um, we've done a lot. That's what I do now. So today should be the second to last day of harvest. I'm gonna say. <sighs> I don't know for sure, but that's what we're thinking. Maybe if we have a good day today, good day tomorrow, which is Saturday, we'll be finished. That would be so nice to finish this week, finish harvest, take it easy for a little bit. So um, everybody's really tired. Um, this harvest wears you down and you keep going and going and going. We've only had like one little rain delay one day and that's it this entire harvest. So we've been going hard for a while and I think we're about ready to have a little break, but... We shall see, hopefully nothing breaks or anything. So come along with us for another day of corn harvest. So I had to do chores this morning. So dad and Lemuel are in the combine starting down there. I'm gonna get in with them now and we're gonna harvest. And that's pretty much it. It's really, really cold out this morning. So I hope that I can get in with them soon. So we'll see. So there's a question to answer. I've answered it in the comments a couple of times about going with the rows on beans. So real quick first, you see how we're doing corn and you have, obviously you have to go with the row. But now this corn, and you can see over here is 17% moisture. And I'm gonna kind of slow down. I'll even pick my head up a little bit. I want you to see what we call head loss. And if you can see what happens on a head is that there's rollers in there that turn real fast and suck the salt straight down and then it, when it's sucking down it snaps the ear off and then you have gathering chains that pull it into the combine. I want you to see how this 17% corn does. If you look real carefully in the row you can see and I don't know if the camera will pick it up. The camera may pick it up. Maybe we'll stick a camera out there and mount it and let you see. But you can see little kernels of corn shattering off down there on every year that gets sucked down and my head's going as slow as it can i'm not going fast and it is is shattering corn off because it's so dry that's called head loss head loss is a bad deal so you're shattering on every year where's the coyote oh Coyote just went into the creek. I told you there would be a coyote down here, let me know. Lots and lots of coyotes this year. There it comes. See it? Running down the edge of the field. It's gonna jump over here and go into the corn with us. So anyways, as I was saying, you have a head loss and if you start losing four or five kernels, off of every ear, uh, it's it adds up. So we have formulas to calculate how much head loss we have and how much field loss. But you do all of this stuff and you're trying to save dollars per acre to make money. Well, when you lose three or four uh, kernels off of every ear, that, that can add up to a bushel or two per acre very quickly. And two bushels of corn on an acre per acre, that equals almost $15 an acre. That's what we're going to anticipate. That's a big loss, $15 an acre. So we're working on slim margins, and I really hate to see that. So we start combining when it's like 18% uh, or, or when it's 20% and drying it down because we can dry it with LP and not have any field loss and do better uh more efficiently dry it in the bin cheaper than we can to suffer the field loss when it gets dry so back to the question of the beans and why how do we cut them so on a bean you take a whole bean plant in and you have a sickle bar that cuts it 
when you go with the row, so you have a 12, a 30 foot head, will take in 12 rows. If on your guest rows where you're planting, if they get close together, you could smash down in an entire row when you're going with the row. And it's that's not a good deal. The other thing about going it is when you, uh, the, the field might have a ripple to it and it, it's hard to, to have your head going straight into a ripple. And I don't, the topography makes a difference. But when you're constantly taking a row in on the same knives all the time, it, it dulls those knives. So you have a, the entire 30 foot head is a knife going back and forth. And when you're constantly putting a row on the same spot, you completely wear out that one spot in your sickle. Meanwhile, the other sickles, like brand new. Well, that doesn't do too good. That's not a very good deal. So uh, you, you cross cut and then you use the whole sickle. The other thing is, is when you're ramming all that matter into one spot, it bunches. Whereas when you're going across, it, it evenly feeds into the machine. And if you bunch, bunch up and then uh, if you bunch up and feed a big what we call a slug into the machine at the same time that's really hard on a machine and it might plug it and you just you can get away with it in dry beans but but not wet beans so when you cross cut at a 45 degree angle you're feeding it into the entire machine evenly it's just uh, so much better so you try to cross cut if possible but if you have to, you go with the rows. In some fields, you can't cross cut. It's just not practical. And other fields are so rocky that you can see down the row and catch a rock. When you're cross cutting, the row blocks you from seeing the ground. So in between the rows is called a bulk. So when you go with the row, you can see the bulk and you uh, have less chance of sucking in a big rock or hitting a big rock and breaking something. So I know that's a lot of talking, but is to answer some of the questions in the comments and uh, kind of teach people how things work. Waiting on the grain cart. Okay, heading in for a lunch break. We're doing chores real quick before we eat. So I got the lambs fed and pinned up for the night. Okay, we got the sheep put up for the night. Dad's finishing milking and... <laughs> This is Kalarabi. Yes, we have a cat named Kalarabi. Okay, so the little ones were in charge of choosing names for the this group of kittens. And they or chose names off of the Lion King movie. So it's Mufasa, Simba, but we call him George. It doesn't make sense, I know. Um, and Nala. But then they tried to name one Serafina, but got confused and called it Shirlabi. So from there... I morphed it into Kalarabi, so it just stuck with her. So yes, we do have a cat named Kalarabi. <laughs> There's Kalarabi. Kalarabi. <laughs> <laughs> with her fluffy tail too. <laughs> Hi, Kalarabi. <laughs> oh no! She's kind of clumsy at times and not the smartest of them all, but sh her cuteness. And her adorable, sweet attitude makes up for it. <laughs> oh, we're back.
Okay, we're quitting for the day. So we had to quit because it started raining and the corn started going up in moisture. So we weren't even supposed to get rain and it's like just enough to get us out of the field. So it's very disappointing, but we're done for the day. Okay, everybody, we're back home now. I'm heading in and we're all gonna head in. So this rain started coming. It's like not even a rain, it's just a shower. And it's like not even enough to help because we're super dry and need rain. It's like just barely enough to keep us out of the field because the corn started getting, started, the moisture started going up. So we're putting it straight in the bin, not running it through the dryer. So we can't have the moisture going up. So we're having to stop for the day. That's gonna be it for today. So I hope you guys all enjoyed another episode of Full Farmathon. And we didn't run late today, so we're probably not gonna get finished with harvest tomorrow. So that's kind of sad, but everybody's tired, so it really doesn't hurt to have a little bit of an earlier day. So that is gonna be it for today. Hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you tomorrow.